a little bit on emuna and bitachon, dealing with marriage and also engagement in going out. The whole idea of marriage, the idea of engagement, takes a lot of emunan, bitachon. It's the whole thing. Because today, many times a person says, I'm not sure. I don't know if I can go ahead with it. I don't know if I can actually go through with it. I got some uh, butterflies about it. I just had somebody calling me late last night. Individual called me up that there was a psura that they got that the person, the man, doesn't, want to, doesn't know whether he wants to continue or not with the shidduch. And there was all kind of upset. What happened all of a sudden? What happened? Everything was going beautifully and everything was all systems would go. And then all of a sudden, no way. I don't know. I got to think about it. I got to speak to my Rav. I got to speak to Elio Navi. Maybe I'll get an assurance from him. I got to speak. Maybe Hashem is going to give me a siman that is going to fall down from Shomayim. It doesn't happen so easy. So let me start off. I was uh, involved in a fundraising effort, and it was a wonderful, wonderful uh, uh, evening where they brought a few different people down in order to give shurim, and it was on behalf of a hospital. There, there was a man that came over to me, and he said, listen, I got an urgent request for you. I said, yeah, tell me. So he says, uh, I'm going out with a girl, and we've been going out for some time. He's not exactly 18 years old, and I would like to bring her because we have a consideration that we want to discuss with you to find out what you think about going ahead, whether we can or whether we shouldn't. I said, come, by all means. The next day, they came to my house. They came, both of them, exactly on time. He sat on one side of the table. She sat on the other side of the table. They were all together different. I said, what's the problem? So he began to explain to me, Rebbe, I have this saving certificate. He told me the amount of money. And then I have that saving certificate. He told me that amount of money. And she has this in a bank account. She also has stocks that total up to 3000 and then she has other investments that, scattered investments that are in bonds, uh, about 10000 By the time they were done, the sachakol, the money that they had was about $70,000. And I'm going, whoa. <laughs> so I was wondering what the shaila is. What's the question? They said to me, Rebbe, we don't know if we have enough money to get married. We're not sure. I have never heard of that amount of money in one place before. <laughs> and I'm thinking about it, Habibi, give me the money. I'll tell you what to do with it. I'll have it. $70,000. I said, are you kidding? Most couples don't have that much when they're married for 20 years. $70,000 is astounding. If you had $1,000, I would tell you, come to Beth Gabriel, make the wedding over here, Yaniv will make sure that it happens. <laughs> Everything will be good. You'll get married. $70,000, what's the problem? Well, you know you have to have a certain amount of money and then to buy a house and then the children and then the grandchildren. <laughs> You're not married yet. <laughs> oh, no, but there's the money. And then uh, you have to take out the money for a vacation and money for this. Uh, I say, I want to ask you a question. Where you go on vacation last summer? Oh, we didn't go up. I said, well, you told me you need money for vacation. Yeah, I know, but when we're married, so we want to take a big vacation somewhere. So I said, tell me, where would you like to take a vacation? He said, I don't know. You know, uh, we would go to Florida or maybe Providence, Rhode Island. I said, I'll tell you what, you got enough money now. You don't have to worry about it. I thought that, and we're going for an hour. Ritzona shalodam zeh? Kivodo. Whatever a person's uh, rots in it, that, that's their honor. You got to talk with them. I tried, and I'm speaking with them about $70,000, and I'm telling them that they have enough money. Have emunah, have bitachon. If you have emunah and you have bitachon, you have faith, 
You got a dollar in the bank, you can do it. Certainly a thousand dollars. You got enough to pay this month's rent. You got enough to go under the chup of the kiddushin. That's enough. Buy a ksuba. What's it cost? Ten dollars for the ketubah. What's a tanaim? Three dollars. You get married. You go ahead. Bracha. You both come together. You bring in bracha in the house. You bring shefa. Come from shemayim. Anyhow, I'm talking to them and talking to them and somehow it's not going in. I said, both of you got to pray. Both of you have got to pray that Hashem gives you the understanding, the chizuk, the inspiration, the, uh, the emunah that it takes to get married because that is what's holding up now. It's not the money. It's not the $70,000. I argued back and forth with them. They said, thank you. You have clarified matters unbelievable for me and for her. They left. It only took, till they got married, seven years. Seven years. Seven years. You know, Yom Lashana, Yom Lashana, so it was like a thousand, <laughs> ten thousand. Le- seven years later, I get a card in the mail. We both prayed. Our, we, like you said, we have the Amuna. And we're going ahead with it. Beautiful. How many years they went until they got married? Lacking one thing, emunah bitachon. When a person has emunah bitachon, everything works. An individual that puts into their mind that they will be able to accomplish, that they're able to go ahead with things, that they can be matzliach, and they're not afraid to take the jump, they're going to be successful. Interesting. Tamud Bavli, Amar Rabba Baba Chana, Amar Rabbi Yochanan, Kasha Lezivugo Shaladam Kekriat Yamsuf. That the making of a matrimonial match, of putting two people together, is as difficult as the parting of the Red Sea. Now we all know the old question to part the Red Sea was not difficult for Hashem. Hashem could turn the water into dam. The water went into blood. Hashem could make the afar kinim. No problem. Hashem could make the daylight choshech. Darkness. No problem. What's the problem with splitting the sea? That's not a problem. Not for Hashem. Interesting. Hashem wanted that Klau Yisrael should be zocheh, should be privileged to the splitting of the sea by suchut, that our merits were able to split the sea. Not bechesed, not that it's just going to come down as a free gift, but rather because we deserve it. Rashi says, V'ataharem et matcha, the pasuk says, raise up, raise your staff, raise it up, raise it over the sea. V'ayovo b'nei Yisrael betoch hayam, v'yabasha. And b'nei Yisrael walked through the sea. Why was it? What happened? So Rashi tells us something very interesting. Zichut avoteem. It was the merit of their fathers. Everybody here, this is such an unbelievable group. It's an unbelievable crowd. Everybody here comes from unreal families, mishpachot, that are l'shem ulatiferet in Klai Yisrael. All of you, it's Mother's Day today. In the Father's Day, whatever that is, I don't know the date, but the mothers and the fathers in Klau Yisrael, it's great. The greatness. Shema b'ni musar torati mecha. Why? Because that's our home is Sora, the fathers and the mothers that we came from. And they were Moser Nefesh no matter where they were, no matter where they came from. Whether they came from Russia or Syria or Iran whether they came from Eretz Yisrael and they were the first there and they fought the Arabs with stones and with sticks. They had nothing, nothing at all. Or whether they came from Poland or Hungary or Czechoslovakia and they fought against Yemach Shema and they persevered. We have Mesir Nefesh in our blood. No matter where we came from, no matter if the person went out with the smugglers from Iran, from Persia, and they had to go at night, little kids, their parents had to say goodbye to them, not knowing what would happen, and then where they ended up, 
finally in these shores until they were reunited sometimes a decade later. All the great, great families that are here. Where did we come from? We came from the parents. So it says, in the schut avoteim, in the great merits of the parents, shehaminu, the emunah shehaminu boy, the fact that they believed in me, that is why the river parted. That's the reason why the Yamsuf came. Interesting. We thought we're going to come up to the Red Sea. It's going to part right away. Oh, the Jews are here. Let's go part it up, right? No way. We needed a zechut. What was the zechut? Nachshon ben Amenidav came. He jumped in the water. As soon as they saw him coming in, the water began to part. Emuna will bring everything. Emuna, our belief, our faith will bring a good marriage, a strong marriage, shalom bayit, parnasa, livelihood. A person has to show that they believe. An individual has to show that they are a maimin. When we go out, we go out, we believe that the zivugim were from shamayim. We don't believe that it's just a mikra. Oh, uh, I don't know why I'm going out with him, or I don't know why they set me up to go out with her. Must be a total mistake. There's no total mistakes. A mikra ba'alma, if their person went out with someone, it is for us to learn. The great Likutim Aran says, there are many shiduchim. There's one zivug. And that means that a person could come going out with a number of people, but it doesn't mean that those people were for naught. Those people were not just happened to be a circumstance. When an individual takes a look at that in Amuna, they don't call up the Shachan, are you out of your mind? How are you setting me up with that guy? I mean, he's a total disaster. No! You say, I needed it. What do you say every morning? Every morning, one of the brachot talks about our needs. Anybody, if you don't got shoes, there is a she'ela, whether you make that bracha or not. You got it. She'asali. Hashem does everything for me. He gives me chazak. He gives me hidabrut. Hashem gives to me Torah anytime. All the things that I need. Hashem gives to me sushi. Hashem <laughs> gives to me all the nice things that I have. All the clothing and all the beauty and everything that I need in the world. So many places to learn. It's unreal. Hashem gives me everything that I need. Beautiful air. Hashem gives me water, soda, fruits, Shavuot. I'll be able to learn all night. I can do whatever I like. Says Rabbi Nachman, a different pshat. Whatever happens to me, I'm walking on the street. I don't realize it. There's a hole in my pocket. I have $100. I didn't realize it. It went out. All of a sudden, I was walking down, and I was so dumb, I didn't even realize it. I bumped into something. I hurt myself bad. I had to go to the doctor. What did I need that for? I went out with this girl, and I don't even know the reason why I had to go out with her. She insulted me on top of it when I went out with her. <laughs> I took her out to uh, the steak place, right? And then she gives me an insult. <laughs> I'm angry, right? Ah, I... When something happens, I know I needed it. I say, what do I need this for? I need like a headache. I need like a visit to the dentist. You don't know, I'll lay them out, go bait Israel, right? No! That's my emunah. That's my belief. That whatever I'm going through is refining me. That that is helping me. And when I get a little knock, I don't say, Bore olam, why you did that to me? Come on. I don't deserve that. I'm Goldwasser. You know who Goldwasser is? Oh, tzaddik yisod olam. Don't we feel that way? La, 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 la. What a person has to say is, Sha'asali. Why the hundred dollars fell out of my pocket? You want to know the reason? Because one time I made money and I was going to donate. I was going to call that charity and give it, but I forgot. It slipped my mind. Other important things were, were on there. 
and I forgot about it, so I never gave the maaser. Hashem going to help me. You know why? I get a little cut in the pocket, or I lose a little change first. The hundred dollars go down, and Ani comes a little bit later, a few minutes later, finds it. The Ani sees it and says, Hashem, thank you. You care about all of us, every person who is poor. Lo Eleno. And I got my tikkun. But I'm still upset. That night I'm saying, the hundred dollars, how could I be so dumb? What's the matter with that tailor? They don't know how to soap the thing properly. Sue the company. Where is it? What's that company's name? Oh, yeah, look in there. I'm going to write them a letter and we're going to get the money back. Wrong way to go. Sha'asali koltsarki. Whatever happens, happens. A person has to know that they are in the seat of an individual that has a great bracha because Hashem cares about every single one of us every single day. Hashem is seem lave. Hashem don't forget about nobody. Shvester Selma lived. She was a great nurse, great nurse in Eretz Yisrael. She lived well over a hundred. And one day she said, I, I think Hashem forgot about me. <laughs> Hashem don't forget. HaKadosh Baruch Hu lo doesn't forget, knows every person. When we show our emuna, when we show our belief, we are zocheh, we are then privileged, we then merit all the brachot in the world. In the schut of emuna, we have another case. Hashem said, B'nai Yisrael, when? They're standing by the river's edge. Moshe Rabbeinu takes out a tehillim. Shir amalot mima. Hashem said, no, now is not the time for tehillim. What do you do? Is Rambam. Rambam says in a time of uh, tzara, a time of any distress, of any pain, you call out to Hashem, you cry to Hashem. Hashem said, no, now is the time to show emunah. Now is the time to jump. Now is the time to show that you believe. Now is the time that you join the club of ma'aminim, b'nei ma'aminim. So too, interesting thing. The Gemara says, when do you make a bracha over the Gishamim? Beautiful, the rain. It rained today, right? Unbelievable. Godel yom agshamim. Greater is the day when it rains. Miyom shenitna bo Torah. It's greater than the day the Torah was given. Greater than the day in the future time that there'll be tchiat ametim. That the dead will be resurrected. Greater than that day. How could it be? The day that it rains. I wake up, I see it's raining outside, I pull over the cover, I say, I'll get up later. You get it? It's, uh, how, how is it today? How's it outside? It's yachi. No. Chaz shalom. A person sees it's raining outside, they should be malay simcha. They are happy. Rain comes, the biggest brachot come. Rain comes to our world, we don't even realize it's unreal. It is unreal, it brings in all of the brachot. So when do you make the bracha? Interesting. It says, when the chatan goes to meet the kala, that's when you make the bracha over rain. What does that mean? So it's interesting. It says the lower waters raise up. There's a whole scientific way to meet the upper waters. And when they meet, then you make the bracha. This is symbolic. A chatan and a kala, a boy and a girl, could be from opposite sides of the world. It could be people that are completely different. You don't have to have somebody that came exactly from your city that has the exact same friend that your mother knew and her, his mother knew and their mother and every doesn't have to be anything. It could be total polar opposites. They get together with one direction that they want to make things work, that they want things should go well in this world. It will work. Two people could be exactly from the same place. They could grow up around the corner. They knew each other. The families knew each other. And it may not work. Why? Because it's emunah and bitachon that's going to make things work. Even an individual goes to somebody totally opposite. It doesn't matter. Interesting. It says what happens. Family, right? Uh, number one thing that people argue over. They shouldn't. There are only a couple of things that people argue over in marriage, Right? I don't argue personally, but I know I heard from others that they do. What's the one or two things? Number one? Money. Ma Ma Yadid has it. Money. Money, right? Piyastas. Money. 
So what happens? Individual starts to get money. So the Talmud says that there is no lack of shalom bias, only over iske tvua, about money. So he says an interesting thing. The Mefarshim, the commentary say, what do you mean over iske tvua, over the way that the, it's handled the business? So he says it's not the pshat, whether there's a lot of money or whether it's a little money. It can go. Some of the happiest people in this world don't have nothing in their house. Nothing. You come in the house, there is not much. It's like a Gaon, Rabbi Chaim Kanievsky. It's like uh, uh, Baba Sali. He wouldn't keep anything in the house. At one time, he wouldn't go to sleep if there was any money there. He gave it all away. He would not keep any money. That's Emunah. He gave it all away. One night, he couldn't go to sleep. How much did he sleep altogether? So the family was going crazy. Why didn't he go to sleep? So he says, there must be money in the house. They turned the house upside down. They pulled away a huge couch from the wall that never was pulled away. Something, by accident, a little coin came underneath. If there was a coin in the house, he couldn't go to sleep. So he asked the question, if you're going to give all your money away, what are you going to have the next day? What are you going to have for the rainy day? Baba Sali said no. Emunam bitachon is... You get rid of all of it. You give away all your money. Hey, I got some money in my wallet tonight. Here, please take it. Get that. And then the next morning, I worry about it anew. That's emunah. That's bitachon. Is that the $70,000 we're talking about in the beginning of this year? Far cry from that. That's emunah. That's bitachon. So it says that why is it that it's al iske tvua because of the money that is in the house? It's how they deal with the money. It's how they understand the money. Do they take the little bit of money and say, what a bracha, look what I have. I can buy something to eat with it. There are people that don't have what to eat. What a bracha, I got a little bit of money. I can take some of the money and I can give it away. I can give it to tzedakah. I can sponsor a shir. I can get a zechut for it. I got to tell you, you don't even need to have money to give away money. It's a big sheila. An ani, a poor person, do they give tzedakah or not? Well, let me tell you, the yeshiva that I was at, the yeshiva, the great yeshiva, Zichron Melech, they sent us one day to collect. Hard times, they needed money. So, a group of us went to different places, went to Square Town. Ah, somebody opened the door in Square Town. A lady, she took a look at us and we said we're collecting for the yeshiva. She said, one minute. She goes inside, she comes back, she gives us an envelope. An envelope already, that's doing good. You know, the guy that gives a dollar or 50, you know, someone gives you an envelope, chashuv me'od, maybe she could be an honoree at the dinner, right? Okay, took the envelope. We're going down, didn't open it up. Finally, finally, we're about to go back. We made it the car, opened up the envelope. There were food stamps in the envelope. She had nothing to give. What's ani? What's poor? What's rich? A guy wrote to me, Rosh Hashanah, I, I wish I brought the card from a federal prison. Federal prison. Raising a little bit of money for people that needed money for Yom Tov. Federal prison, he sent me a card. Inside the card, he wrote, Rebbe, I'm sorry, I have absolutely no money. I cannot make any money. Whatever I have is taken for a little bit of food. The only thing that I can do is to send you a postage stamp. Postage stamp. And inside, in a little white folder, there's a postage stamp. And he says, please forgive me. I hope will be the day that I could send you more. I have this guy's card. I'm willing to send you a copy. Anybody want to see? I tell you the truth. Whenever I feel bad about anything, I just take out the card. Someone comes into the study and they tell me something. I show them, are you less fortunate than that fellow? And I show them the card. That is what we're talking about. How do we deal with it when it comes to us? Okay. So what is it about the rain? So it's an interesting thing. 
uh, when the rain comes down, it's big bracha, it's big blessing for all of us. How do we know about when the rain comes down? Because the skies get real dark and the clouds come out. And when you see the sky gets dark and the clouds come out, you get nervous, right? Oh, it's dark. It's good. But you know what comes after that dark and those clouds? The rain comes down from Shemayim. It comes down to all of us. And the best brachot happen for you and I. That is what happens when a person goes through a difficult tekufa. Maybe in marriage, it's a little bit of a test. It's a challenge to get past it, to understand the other person. They were brought up completely different. I was brought up different than they were. We weren't, we're not like each other at all. So how do I accept it and how do I accept the place where the wife came from, where the husband came from, and their minhagim and their customs, and I'm so different than they are. No! You don't look at that. You look at what your commonalities are. You look at what you have in common. You forge together. You meet on a higher level. And then there is total achdut. So what does it say? That if a person will understand that, that even during the times of challenge, great things will come about, then already it's completely different. A couple goes out. A couple goes out. They're going out to get married. And uh, unfortunately, the guy came late. Okay, you could come late. Some people's clock works better than others, right? You know, uh, it's a shila, by the way, if you're giving a shear, just want to tell you. It's a shila whether the Talmud or the Talmud is allowed to take the clock. It's 10 after 9. So uh, you want them to stay longer if it's a good shear, right? <laughs> so you, you want to put the hands back to 20 to 9. So the Rebbe takes a look at the thing. And he's like, oh, we got time. But really, it was over. Are you allowed to do it or not? What do you say? Vanessa got it. You are allowed. Even though you think you're not allowed. It's not, not, don't do it to me. Somebody else you could do it. <laughs> the truth is, not allowed. But for Rebbe, you could. You want to learn more Torah, you're allowed to put back the clock. That's an amazing thing. Amazing thing. When we are talking about understanding, understanding the way that we have to operate with each other. There's got to be complete understanding. So the guy came late. He came late. It happened. The girl happened to be a real yakka. He walks in. Already the thing is gone that night. I mean, she's spitting fire. It's this guy's walking through the door. Hi. <laughs> nice of you to show up. <laughs> okay. They go in the car. Not a problem. Uh, first of all, he says, uh, I'm not exactly sure how to get to that place, right? Okay, it could be. Not everybody had a great sense of direction. I was thinking maybe you could help me. I have to help him. He can't man up and take it. Uh, he's supposed to be picking me up to go to thing. I, would I have to be in this relationship, right? What kind of guy is this guy? Be a gavra! Be a man! Right? Okay, that's the a, that's a second thing. She's already toasted. Then a problem happened. The gauge for the gasoline was not exact. So they sort of ran out of gasoline on the highway. Could happen. <laughs> Happens, you know, on the highway, right? By this time, she's blowing smoke. Yeah. She's, she's quite upset. She's quite upset, understandably. I get the call the very next morning. Sometimes people, when they're upset, they don't even know the clock. <laughs> Four o'clock in the morning. Oh, Rebbe, uh, is this early? <laughs> no, I always wake up this time to answer the phone. Okay. <laughs> when I, she gets on the phone. I got Simanim. I got my sign from Shemayim. He came late. He didn't know where he's going. And now this is the final Siman. He ran out of gas on the highway. <laughs> Kapara. Now, Hashem was saying, this is obviously not the guy for you. I said to her, wrong. This is a simon that it is for you. It's a simon that you should take this guy and hurry up and make sure you get him engaged. Buy him a watch or whatever he buys, whatever, a shas, whatever is going to get him. Why? Because when they're nisyonot, when there are challenges in life, that means that there's something important involved. When a person wants to pick up 
a Gemara. And they want to try to, okay, let me do it real quick. Uh, let me get that cliff notes. Let me get the monarch on it. Whoa, down there. No. It's going to take me going through it, understanding it, getting the aramic straight, getting everything that I need, understanding the Lishonot of the Gemara, understanding what's bothering Rashi, Tosvot. It's going to be a long journey. But it's worthwhile because look what you get. Going out. If there are few, few challenges that happen along the way, then you know it's worthwhile. If the first challenge, a person says, okay, that's it for me, I'm going to bail, I'm jumping ship, then the person does not understand. Things that are important, things that are important, there are obstacles, there are preventions, there are things on the road, there are roadblocks that a person has to get over those hurdles. Har Sinai, Har Sinai, Kabbalat Torah, right? Harsinai, what happened in that time? Amazing, amazing thing. Hashem says it's got to be up on the mountain. Not a high, high mountain, but just Harsinai, a low mountain. Why? Why would it have to be up on the mountain? Why couldn't Hashem say, look, I'll do it right on the valley, right over here. I'll do it in a place that's easy. Why? Because Hashem said you want to go, you want to achieve something, you want to get Torah. You've got to go up the mountain. Mi aleh? Who goes up that mountain? You've got to extend. You've got to be careful. Your footing's got to be even. You've got to go and raise yourself up. Listen, I like to do certain things that it doesn't say in the Torah that you're really allowed to do it, you know. So uh, in order to be Mechabel Torah, I know I've got to do it, right? I guess I've got to do it. It's a hard thing. There are obstacles on the way. And then the night before, Kabbalat Torah, anybody here, you go on an exciting trip, night before your wedding, night before your engagement, night before your Olelik Dula, you graduate, night before any important occasion happens. I don't know about you, but I can't go to sleep. No way. Doesn't matter how much wine you drink. You're up like this, you're waiting for the next morning. You can't wait, right? Night before Kabbalat Torah, single greatest event in Klau Yisrael. What was greater? Kabbalat Torah. Next morning, everyone's sleeping. Hashem had to wake up. Listen, uh, Rabotai, there is an occasion today everybody's got to come to. Hashem wakes everybody up. Please, could you come to the Sinai? It's the time for Kabbalat Torah. Why? Why? Obstacles. That's why we stay up every, every year. That's the whole reason we stay up at night. We show Hashem that we are ready, willing, and able to be Mechabel Torah. So in the area of Shiduchim, in the area of Shalom Bayit, in getting along, in understanding the greatness that Hashem has placed in our midst, there are going to be obstacles. There are going to be difficulties. There are going to be hardships, Chaz Hashem. There's going to be things that are going to have to get through in order to be matzliach, in order to be successful. Shevel yipo tzaddik, come. Seven times the tzaddik's going to fall down. Seven times I'm going to try. Seven times I'm going to go out. Seven years I'm going to go out. Seven times I'll go to the marriage thing. Seven times I'll go to the therapist. Seven times. And it failed. And I made seven new starts and it didn't work. Come. But the next time, you'll be matzliach. Listen to this. Ain la Yehudi, Rabbi Tzadok HaKohen. Ain la Yehudi lit ya'esh mishum davar. A Jew should never, ever despair, no matter what happens in this world. No matter what happens. No matter how bleak, no matter how difficult, no matter how cloudy the day is or dark is the night. Bein binyane aguf, whether it's dealing with the body, like Chazal say, afilu cherev chada. Even a sharp sword is resting on a person's neck, right? Person, don't give up. Could be the last second. Never give up. Never give in. Never say, I'm done. Never throw in the towel. Never say, it's too much for me. Never say, I can't. Those words got to be taken out. Not in our lexicon. Never. I have to say, I'm going to go until the last second. Interesting. Bein bin yanea nefesh. Even a person go to the lowest level. 
and they sinned in something that our great sages have said, She'en tshuva mo'elet, that tshuva will not help chas v'shalom. O tshuva kashe, or the tshuva is very difficult. O shiroa atzmo, or the person sees that they have reached a level, al, no matter what happens, a person should never give up. Shelo yocho, I can't do it anymore. I'm not able to. I can't separate from this. I'm in a bad state. I'm in a stupor. I'm lost. Ki ein makom liyush klau. There is no place to give up. Eitzel ish Yehudi, by a Jewish man or a Jewish woman. When a person reads the words of Rabbi Tzadok, so then we realize that there is no way that we are ever, ever allowed to give up no matter what happens, no matter how bad it seems. An interesting question was asked in the times of the Holocaust. And at the time of the Holocaust, there were many people that were unfortunately so oppressed, so tortured, that they had a question whether they were allowed to just put themselves in harm's way to give up, to give up on their life and to say, I had enough. I can't do it anymore. The question was asked several times to the Sheilot to Chuvot Mimamakim, to the great Rabbi Yashri, Zechet Sadik Livracha, and also to the Rav of Kovno. Could they give up their life? Could they do it in order to come to Kever Yisrael to make sure they had a Jewish burial rather than being in a heap somewhere? rather than their families witnessing their torture, rather than being killed in front of everyone? The answer came back, no. A complicated, intricate answer using the Mepharshim, no. A person may never, ever be ma'abed atzmo lodat. That is where we hold. That is our level. Never, ever to give up. That a person has to be very strong and go ahead and show their emunah when you show your emunah, even at the last second, the last second, doesn't matter. It wasn't going good. Shidduchim weren't going good. The marriage wasn't going good. But a person chose that they don't give in. Even after the last second, even after the time they didn't give in, they get a big bracha that the whole situation changes. Let me just give you a quick piece in the Talmud. The Talmud tells us, it was the time of Aliyat HaRegel. Everybody was coming to Yerushalayim. There was no water available in Yerushalayim. Nakdimun ben Gurion, who was exceedingly wealthy, approached a person who was a great uh, diplomat, and he said, please lend me 12 wells of water. He'll repay him with the 12 wells of water by a certain date. Otherwise... He'll give him 12 measures, 12 measures of silver. They fixed the date when Nakdimon would pay back for all of the water that he borrowed for Klal Yisrael. The time for the repayment came. It came to be that day. The deadline was nightfall. Oh, what happened? The man came to him and he said, Nakdimon, it's the day. It's the last day. Pay me. Pay me. Nagdimon said, Orayom Gadol. The day is still big. The day is still mine. He sent them in the afternoon. Okay, pay me. It's already afternoon. Time is up. Pay me. He said, No, still time left. No rain fell through the whole year. And he said, Nagdimon, you think rain is going to fall now? It didn't fall the whole day, already in the afternoon. Nagdimon went into the Beit Midrash and he prayed. Vore Olam, you know that I did the water. I got all of the water that I borrowed for Klal Yisrael. No lichvodi, not for my honor, not for my own kavod. I did it only for Klal Yisrael, not for the honor of my father's house, only for the Ole Regel, all the good Jews that were coming to Yerushalayim. Immediately, the sky became dark, filled with clouds, and the rain came. And the 12, bar 12 pits were filled with water. There was even water left over. When Hashem had finally 
the man came out to collect, he came to Nagdimon and he said, I will tell you something. I know that it was dark. How did it get light? It was dark. How is it possible? Hashem had the sun break through the clouds after it was already dark, after it was already night. The Mephoshim asked the question, why did Nagdimun wait until the last minute? He could have come early in the morning. Special minion for Shacharit, everybody come. Uh, let's go, we'll make a Nate's minion. Now oh, the whole queens, everyone will come from all the places. And we're going to meet, we're going to have special tefillot. Everybody will fast on that day and we're going to bring the rain. Why did he wait until the night? Why did he wait until the person kept saying, where's the water, pay me back? The interesting answer is, is because not until a person already waited and showed their amuna after the sun went down, after it was the deadline, after it said, I got no hope anymore. The sun went down. That's it. I'm done. Nakdimon didn't give up. He went to the Beit Midrash. He prayed with his entire being, with his whole heart and soul. Interesting. It says, Ashrei She'el Yaakov Bezro. Happy is the person that the Hashem of Yaakov is his help. What does it say there? Sivro al Hashem Elokov. His hope is Hashem. The Zohar HaKadosh says, don't read it Sivro, but read it Shivron, broken. He is broken. He is a person that has nothing, that has already given up, but he doesn't give up totally. He gathers his strength, he grabs onto Hashem, and Hashem takes him. Hashem helps him. The way that we should approach any type of Sholem bias matter, of any type of Shidduch concern, is with full emuna and full bitachon. Emunah and bitachon is knowing that Hashem is the kol yachol. Hashem can make anything happen, no matter where a person is at, no matter what a person is going through. Hashem can turn it in to a positive. Hashem can bring the blessing out of nowhere. Hayat Hashem Tiktsor, is the hand of Hashem ever too short to cause all the brachot to happen for a person. When we have emunah, when we have bitachon, it brings every bracha. I have emunah, I have a bitachon. There's nothing that is not accomplished for me. There's nothing that is beyond. There is nothing that I cannot do. As long as I have that in my mind. And I just would like to tell you, uh, you, it goes in a, a number of different ways. There was a person, okay, happened to be an individual, and she wished, she wished to get into the family of Avraham Avinu. Now, uh, very interesting to get in the family of Avraham Avinu. It's not so simple. Uh, I would like to go uh, to get into the family of Rabbi Yashav. I want to get into the family of Rabbi Chaim Kanievsky. I like to get in the family of Chacham Yosef. I like to get into the family. Not so simple. A person has to be Zocher. Can you imagine Avraham Avinu? The Shadchonim were calling Avraham Avinu day and night. We got this girl, we got that guy, right? There was a woman. The Timna Hoysa Pilegesh Lelifaz. Timna was a Pilegesh to Elifaz. Ben Esav. Vatele Lelifaz. Et Amalek. Unfortunately, Amalek came out. The greatness of Avram was the people wanted to be in Avraham Avinu's family. They wanted to be part of it. They wanted to have a piece of the rock. So what happened? So there we see that Timna said, you know what, I'm not going to get into that family. I'm not going to become an actual, like a daughter, a daughter-in-law, whatever it is. So she said, you know what, I could be a plagueish. I could be a Pelagish. I could be like a wife, wife of Eliphaz. She struggled and struggled and didn't let it out of her mind and continued to press on and continued and continued. She had one goal in mind, Emuna Shalema, that she was going to be. And she ended up, and she was that. She became the Pelagish. How? Because she had a goal. She had Emuna. 
I'm going to do it. Impossible to become any part of Avraham Avinu? No. There is nothing that's impossible. Once a person has emunah, once a person does not let any negativity, any cynicism, doesn't read the things that are cynical or negative about anything, and a person remains positive, and they remain emuna, amamin ba'ashem, ube Torah to, in Hashem's Torah, they can accomplish anything in the world. So she did. However, she was not exactly, exactly lishma in the way that she did it. She also did it in a way that was too aggressive. It was, unfortunately, with akshanut. And because of that, it did not have good results. But what we do see is that a person that has a munam bitachon, they can accomplish even the impossible. You see that from people, they survived all types of things. How did they do it? Koach of emunah, ashrei hamamin, happy is the person. When we're going out and we have emunah shalema about what we're doing, belishum, without any doubting, without any person saying, I'm not sure, and a question, and maybe, no, I know bemunah shalema. Shalom bayit is possible. Even though 10 years went down, down the road, and there hasn't been any uh, good days. Emunah Shlema. Yeshua Tashem. Kevayim. It could happen in a half a second. And so, there was the owner of a jewelry store, exclusive jewelry store. A little girl came in, and he thought she's looking for that store, you know, everything for a dollar. They have that store, everything uh, for a dollar. So he sees a little girl walk in. And. He had only the most expensive items. But the way she was looking at the case, he knew that she was very serious. It was strange. A little girl walk into an expensive jewelry store and she sees in the case. All of a sudden, she says, I would like to see that piece. A very outstanding piece of jewelry. The moicher didn't want to embarrass anybody. He carefully took the jewel out from the locked case. He put it on top of velvet, and she looked at it. He said to her very nicely, you should know, we don't sell toys here. We don't sell toys here. This is very expensive jewelry. The cheapest that we have is over a thousand shkalim. The girl said, I have money. I have money. She whispered, I have money. Even if she had money, was he allowed to sell an expensive piece to that young girl? Where would the money come from? Where was she going with the jewelry? To whom in the future would he have to give a din v'cheshven, an accounting of why he sold it? The girl was very happy that she found what she was looking for. It was exactly what she wanted. She took out her money to pay. She had a little wrapped up bag and she took her money out, carefully wrapped. She had about seven shkalim and a little bit of change. The shopkeeper, when he saw it, he nearly choked. He didn't have the heart to tell her that way is the door, there's the exit. He said to her patiently, this jewelry costs over 2,500 shkalim. You have only seven shkalim. Eight shkalim at most. Do you understand? He said gently. You should go home and when you get another 240,000, then you should come back when you'll have the money. She said, this is all the money I have. I don't have more. The shopkeeper became interested in what she was here for. So he said, tell me, why do you need that piece of jewelry? She said to him, my mother died. When my mother died, there was no one to take care of us in the house. I have an older sister. My older sister cooks in the house. She cleans in the house. She washes my clothing. She gets me dressed in the morning. She makes my hair. She ties the robe, the ribbons. At night, sometimes I'm a little scared. 
She sits on my bed. She holds my hand. She tells me a story. It is her birthday. We don't have anything to make a birthday party for her. So we're going to have a few cookies. I want to buy for her a present to show my hakarata tov, my appreciation. As soon as she concluded, the words broke through to the heart of the jeweler. He took that jewel, he wrapped it up carefully in a box, put fancy wrapping paper on it, and said to her, Mazel tov, take it. She went, she took it, the next day, her sister's birthday, she proudly gives this little girl, the sister, the birthday present. The sister opens it up and says, where did you get this from? How much was it? And she explains that she gave her little money for it. The next day, the older girl, the sister, went to the jewelry store and she said, could I ask you, how much did my sister pay you for this? Your sister, she paid in full. The Moicher said, she paid all the money because sometimes the heart is worth more than all the gold. Rabotai, remember, it is for us to know the heart is worth more than anything. Inside of our heart is got to be full of emunah, full of bitachon. With that, you can buy jewelry. With that, you can get the best shidduch. With that, you can have the best shalom bayit. With that, you can bring Mashiach. It takes the heart. Thank you.